Good afternoon, second graders. I have a very exciting book to read to you for our reading lesson today. Um, as you've done with the Mighty Miss Malone, as well as your review assignments for this week, um, we are going to talk about character traits today, as well as character motivations. So a little bit of a review with a little bit of something new. That rhymed. Our book today is one of my favorites from my childhood. It's pretty um, funny. It's called The Dragon's Scales mm. by Sarah Albee, illustrated by John Manders. Once there was a small town beside a wide river. The town was called Berrytown. Everyone who lived there was crazy about berries. They loved to eat berries. They loved to look at berries. They even loved to smell berries. In the spring, the people of Berrytown went over the bridge across the river into the fields. There, they planted all kinds of berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and even huckleberries. Mmm, that sounds yummy. In the summer, when the berries were ripe, there was a big parade. Everyone marched through the town on their way to the berry fields. Here's where we're going to be introduced to one of our main characters. As we're introduced to our main characters, there are two. I want you to start um, paying attention to things they're saying, ways that they're acting. Try to come up with some character traits on your own so that when we go over this together and I give you something to try on your own at home, you already have some ideas in mind. But one year when the people of Berrytown reached the bridge, something was wrong. <gasps> that something was a very big, very scaly, and very scary what do you think it's going to be? It was a dragon! No one may cross this bridge, the dragon said. The berries are all mine. I didn't even know dragons liked berries. Wow. The townspeople sadly turned away. They wanted the berries. But what could they do? The dragon was bigger and stronger and scarier than any of them. Wait, came a small voice. It was a little girl named Holly. I have an idea, Holly said to the dragon. Let's have a contest. If I win, you have to go away. Okay, said the dragon, but if I win, then everyone has to work in the berry fields for me. Ooh. Is that okay? Holly asked. The people of Berrytown nodded. That was nice of her to ask everybody if that was okay. It was their only chance. The school teacher stepped forward. I see that you have a set of scales, he said to the dragon. Hmm. Right there. I will ask three questions about weights, said the teacher. Whoever gets two out of three questions right wins. The dragon's scales will decide who is right. Okay, said Holly. The dragon was not used to this kind of a contest. But he knew that whoever is biggest and strongest and scariest always wins. So he nodded. <laughs> the dragon gave his scales to the teacher. Then the dragon and Holly stood back to back. They took one, two, Three steps. Which 
which weighs more? asked the teacher. One apple or two peas? Hmm. The dragon snorted. Everybody knows that two things weigh more than one thing, he said. So two, t two peas weigh more than one apple. Is he right? What do you think? Mm. Two things don't always weigh more than one thing, said Holly. What matters is how heavy the things are. I know that an apple is heavier than two peas. Mm. Who's right? Let's see who is right, said the teacher. The teacher put the apple on one side of the scales, and he put the peas on the other side of the scales. The apple side went down. The peas side went up. That means the apple weighed more than the peas. Who was right? The townspeople cheered. The dragon snarled. Holly and the teacher smiled. Mm. Next question, said the teacher. Which weighs more, a little bag of gold or a big bag of cotton? Hmm. Big things weigh more than little things, said the dragon. So, the big bag of cotton must weigh more than the little bag of gold. Is the dragon's logic correct? Just because one thing is bigger than another doesn't mean that it is heavier, said Holly. I know that even a big bag of cotton is lighter than a little bag of gold. Who will be right this time? What do you think? The teacher put the bag of gold on one side of the scales. He put the bag of cotton on the other. The gold side went down. The cotton side went up. The gold weighed more than the cotton. Who was right this time? Time for you to pack up, said Holly to the dragon. The dragon started to cry. Poor dragon. Holly felt sorry for the dragon. I'll ask you one more question, she said. If you answer it right, then you can stay. But you have to promise to be nice. The dragon sniffled. I really am nice, he said. But no one ever wants to share with a dragon. Aww. Which weighs more, Holly asked. A bucket of bricks or a bucket of feathers? The buckets are the same size, said the dragon. Two things that are the same. Think very carefully, said Holly. The dragon took a deep breath. He thought very carefully. Bricks are heavier than feathers, he said. So, even though there's the same amount of bricks and feathers, the bucket of bricks must, may, must weigh more. Hmm. Is he right this time? Or will we have to go? Mm -hmm. Holly put the bucket of feathers on one side of the scales. She put the bucket of bricks on the other. The brick side went down and the feather side went up. The bricks weighed more than the feathers. Oh, look at that face. He's so happy.
The dragon was right. And that's the story of how Berrytown got its very own watch dragon. Oh, what a happy ending. All right, so I have here something that's probably going to look familiar to, to you. It's a list of character traits. It has simple character traits like nice, mean, sad, positive, negative, confident, nervous, opposites, does a lot, does very little. Those are your headings to find more in-depth, more specific character traits if you want to challenge yourself. I am going to put this on Google Classroom, and in the description I will link um, these materials to Google Classroom so that after you're done watching this video, or in the middle if you want to pause this, you can go right to Google Classroom and find these materials. So what we are going to do together is we are going to come up with character traits about the more difficult character to, to figure out, which is going to be the dragon. Now remember, the dragon didn't really have a name like Holly. His name was just dragon. Okay. The story title was The Dragon's Scales. Remember, the title of a story needs to be all capital at the beginning and underlined. So we're going to take a look at the story, The Dragon Scales, which we just read, and the character, The Dragon. We're going to come up with two character traits together. And then when we're done with that, we can draw and color the dragon if we choose to. Okay? So, in the story, The Dragon Scales we need to come up with some character traits about the dragon. I'm thinking about the beginning of the story. I am seeing that, I'm thinking that he was kind of mean in the beginning, but I wanna get more specific. So here's some options. We have angry, bossy, cruel, dark, disrespectful, evil, harsh, hateful, impolite, insensitive, raging, rude, selfish, spoiled, thoughtless, uncaring, unfriendly, and unpleasant. When we're first introduced to the dragon, he said this to the townspeople of Berrytown. No one may cross this bridge, the dragon said. The berries are all mine. When he said that, oh, just like uh, Deza in The Mighty Miss Malone, I had an epiphany. A light bulb went off in my head. I recognized that this is a good example of the character trait. Where'd it go? Selfish. Selfish. He showed that he was selfish there because he told the people of Berrytown that he wasn't going to share the berries. They're all his. So that tells me that the dragon is selfish. And I'm going to be careful with my spelling, and I know how to spell selfish by looking at my character trait list here. So the first trait was selfish. Evidence from the text, remember it's always important to support your answer with something from the book or from the story. So we just found a great spot in the dragon skills that proved this. I don't have to quote the book exactly. I just have to explain because he told the townspeople that the berries were all his, he was not sharing. And that means that he was keeping them all to himself and he was being selfish. So I can write the dragon told the people of Berrytown that the berries were all his. He was not going to share with them. Now, these townspeople had never seen this dragon before. 
from the sounds of it in this story. What's interesting is that it sounds like for years the people of Berrytown would cross the bridge to harvest the berries, pick the berries. This dragon comes out of nowhere and says, these berries are all mine. Well, were they his to claim? Not technically. But remember, the dragon kept talking about how the biggest, scariest creature usually won. In fact, he said they always win in a contest. So I bet you that he probably thought, even though these don't belong to me, I'm going to say that they do because I'm big and I'm scary and they're not going to challenge me. So I get to, I get to say these are mine even though they aren't because they're not going to do anything about it. That's being selfish. We need to find a second character trait. I would like to go towards the end of the story for this character trait because we see kind of a personality change or we see more of what's on the inside of the dragon's heart towards the end of the story, more than what was just on the surface, the angry um, dragon. So after he got two questions wrong on the scales, He's not so big and bad and scary anymore, is he? He's crying. Holly tells him he has to leave. And she ended up feeling sorry for him because he's crying. He explains to her, I really am nice, he said, but no one ever wants to share with a dragon. So the reason that he tried to take something that wasn't his is because he was feeling something. There's a character trait here that explains how the dragon was feeling on the inside and why he acted so rough on the outside. So, I can look under sad, and I will read these off to you, and I want you to think in your head which of these sounds most um, accurate to describe the dragon now. Is he antisocial, comfortless, depressed, down, friendsless, gloomy, glum, heartbroken, heavy-hearted, hopeless, isolated, lonely, lonesome, miserable, moody, sorrowful, unhappy, or withdrawn? You know, a couple of those that I just read kind of made me think, ooh, Maybe this one. Ooh, maybe this one. Which one of the ones I just read do you think describes the dragon the most? I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. The one that most struck me was friendsless. Yes, he's heavy hearted. Yes, he feels isolated and lonely. Um, yes, he's unhappy. But I feel like what describes him most here in the story is he's friendless. That's why he's being so rough to all of these other people in the story. He says no one ever wants to share with a dragon. That tells me that he doesn't have any friends. That's hard. So for his second character trait, I'm going to write friendless. We need to find evidence from the text. Every time I see the dragon in this story, he is alone. Look at how Holly has all of these townspeople around her, even the teacher. They show townspeople in the background. But every time they show the dragon, he's by himself. See? That is a way that the illustrator is showing us that he really has no one standing behind, besi behind him or beside him. He has nobody that's on his side, nobody who's backing him up. That is a good example of a way that the illustrator is showing you that the dragon really doesn't have any friends. So that's one example that I can write as evidence. So I can write, um, in every picture, of the dragon, no one is around him. Unlike other characters. 
because like I said, Holly, the teacher, there's always somebody either behind them, beside them, around them. More obviously than that, though, we already talked about, um, he says it. He says, I promise I'm nice. It's just no one ever wants to share with me. So he opens up to Holly. He says, the dragon says, no one ever wants to share with him. I found two pieces of evidence from our story telling you or telling the reader why I'm proving my point to why he's friendless. So just like I always tell you, it's important to find evidence. It's important to find proof. You're like detectives. You're like reading detectives. Well, I think the dragon's friendless. Well, why? You've got to prove it. So I proved it by saying in every picture of the dragon, no one is around him, unlike other characters. He says no one wants to share with him. Well, I think the dragon's selfish. Well, how do you know? Prove it. Well, the dragon told the people of Berrytown that berries were all that the berries were all his. He was not going to share with them. That proves that he's selfish. Now, I'm not going to take time in this video to illustrate the dragon, but that's something that I would like you to do at home when I give you your assignment. And your assignment is not to do the dragon, okay? You're going to be doing another character. But before we before I explain to you what you will be doing, Let's take a look at some, sorry, character motivations. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, to write who we're talking about. We can draw a picture. What did they do? Draw a picture. Why did they do that? Draw a picture. So again, we're going to continue thinking about the dragon because he's more difficult to pin down. Who? Dragon. <laughs> Again, I'm drawing quickly so that I don't take up a lot of time. And he has little horns. Okay. Who? Dragon. Okay. What did he do? What did he do? The biggest problem in this story is that he threatened to take away the berries from Berrytown, right? That's what this whole competition was about, trying to figure out who gets to keep the berries or who gets to um, who gets to stay in the town and who has to go. So what did the dragon do? The dragon uh, said the berries. were all his. So why did he do that? And I'm just going to draw a berry bush because, again, I don't want to take a lot of your time. Why did he do that? We just talked about that in the character motivations, as a matter of fact. He did that because he said no one ever wants to what? No one ever wants to share with him, so he's got to take things himself, he thinks. Why? No one wants to share with him. Now, if he would have asked the townspeople if he could share the berries with them, I wonder how this story could have gone differently. I wonder if the townspeople would have shared with him or if they would have been scared of him because of what he looked like. I guess we'll never know, but it's something interesting to think about. So that's why this whole problem started. All right, so no one wants to share with him. Character motivations. Why is someone the way they are, or why is someone wanting to do certain things? The dragon took the berries for himself. What was his motivation? What was his 
reasoning behind doing that? Well, his reasoning behind doing that was no one ever wants to share with him anyway, so he had to take it. So character motivations are not just what do they do, it's why. That's important. Why do, why do people do things that, that they do? Why do people act the way that they do? That's an important thing to think about, and that's what I want you to think about today with the dragon skills. So I, as an example for you, looked at character traits for the dragon in the dragon skills and motivations of the dragon in the dragon skills. What I would like you to do at home is I would like you to do the same thing that I just modeled for you and that we worked on together, except for the character that I want you to focus on is Holly. Which, isn't it interesting that her name is Holly? Holly's a type of berry. Just saying. So I want you to do the same thing that we just did together, that I just did for you. I want you to do that, but with Holly. Okay? So give me two character traits that describe her. Use this to help you. You don't even have to print this out. Just look at it on Google Classroom. How would you describe her? Give me two traits. Got to prove it. Got to show me in the story. How do you know? If... Two character traits is too easy for you. I do still want you to do the, motiva the motivation organizer because this is new. But if you need a challenge, you can do this one. This one's asking for four character traits. That's going to be a lot more difficult, especially in such a short story, to do um, rather than the two character traits. So the choice is yours as far as which of these you would like to do. If you want a challenge, or if you um, simply want to practice and review. And then I also need you to do the character motivation organizer. Why? This is the important thing today. Why do people do the things that they do? Okay. All of these materials will be found on Google Classroom. The link to these materials I will put in the description. I hope that you loved the story Dragon Skills today. I loved reading it to you. I love sharing this book with others because of how much I loved it as a child. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this is a good review for you. I hope you'll start thinking about why characters do the things they do, why they are the way that they are, and I hope you have an awesome day. Um, also, which is going to be uploaded at 11 o'clock, is your Musical Wednesday challenge. So check out what Mrs. Keller chose to do, and I can't wait to see what you chose to do. Post them and group me. Have a great day. Love you, friends.